You're working. I'm live. I hope I'm live. I was having some technical issues because why would anything work? <laughs> First live and I don't know if it's working or not. So hopefully it is working. If anyone is there, if you can just let me know. Um, I'm just going to say, oh, sorry dogs. Um, scare, scare them before we even get started. Not what I wanted, but they didn't bark which leads into some of my topics, so that's good. Um, let me see if I can actually bring this up so I can actually check as well. Don't eat the bottle. We have that tomorrow. Let me see if I can... Yes, yes. Thank you, Stephanie. <laughs> just seen your comment on Facebook, so thank you. So... I'll just uh, give it a minute just to see if anyone is join, else is joining us. If not, I shall get started. Um, I have got it on my phone, so if anyone does want to post any questions, you can do. And I shall keep checking on my phone. So... By the way, should just hit, make sure everything is ready. So, got my dogs in the room with me. Being, hopefully, will be a good example. Okay. I think I might just starts um it is late it is 11 11 o'clock at night in uk time and i did specifically pick this time in hopes that no one would jump online so i could just do it and then, and then hide away um, and forget about it rather than being traumatized by having an audience um it is my first ever talk so um a tad nervous but you know we don't do these things we'll never do them so um even just to a second ago, I was trying to talk myself out of it, but like, no, no, it's fine. I'll do it. I've done it. I'm doing it. So, but anyway, I shall get get started. And then if anyone else joins, then fab, if not, also fab. <laughs> so, no problem. So, um, hello, everybody. My name is Caroline, and I run Puppy School Dartford. So, all my training um, is positive. It's fun, family-friendly. It's false free and reward based training. So um, super, super important that everything that dogs that I train with and um, even my own dogs have that that bracket and everything sort of positive for them um, and reward based. So reward based training is praise. So praising them for something that they've done well and we're happy with um, ignoring sort of bad behavior. So um, puppies, for example, if they we on the floor we don't tell them off we don't say no they don't understand i will be doing another talk tomorrow about puppies so i'm going more into that tomorrow um you know, reward based training is also toys so using toys dogs love toys um and also food a um, majority of dogs are foodie <laughs> so um, i know my dogs are they love a bit of food um not only am i a puppy trainer with puppy school i am also a pro dog trainer with absolute dogs i am a agility instructor i am an improved approved uh, kids around dogs trainer debbie did a talk um, earlier on this evening and i'm also a volunteer for pets as therapy with my middle child as i call her tilly um, Izzy will be going for her assessment when lockdown starts to ease a little bit, as well as my old dog. Um, I do have three dogs, so I am a, a multi-dog household. So my eldest dog is a Westie, 
she is eight. My middle child, um, Tilly, is five. And my border collie, Izzy, uh, just turned two last week and she's the, the baby of the family. Um, my talk tonight is going to be an introduction to enrichment and calmness for dogs. I have always done enrichment with my dogs on some level, but it was only when I got my border collie that it became a regular, every single day occurrence with um, things that I do, and we'll, we'll come across that later on as I go through everything with you. Um, when I got my border collie, she wasn't planned at all. Um, it was just something that happened. I blame uh, puppy school as part of my assessment. I had to work with a litter um, and three, nobody wanted her. So she was the, the last in the litter and nobody wanted her. Three people cancelled. And in the end, I was just like, I'll have her. <laughs> um, and I got told quite a lot, you know, oh, you've got border collie, they're this habits and, you know, make sure you do this and don't do this. I have to say she's not your typical border collie. Um, she's actually very lazy for a border collie. Sometimes she needs a little bit of motivating, so we get the chicken out just to motivate her. My Westie, my uh, Tilly, is actually more border collie than she is. Um, she doesn't like a ball. Um, she doesn't chase the ball, anything like that. She's not a chaser, um, not a digger, anything like that. She's uh, really good. She's a very, very um, chilled border collie, actually. Um, and I don't know if it's what I've done with her, from a puppy, I had very strict kind of in my mind of what I actually wanted and didn't want with her. And I, I'm sort of very happy with her. I think the only struggle we have is that loose lead walk in when we first get outside the door. She kind of just like, I just want to go, just let me run, I just want to go. But that's a, a different topic for another day. Um, so, as I said, my talk this evening is about enrichment and calmness. So, canine enrichment what is it and how does it help? So providing enrichment for our dogs can be really rewarding for them um, and fun. It's really, really easy to add enrichment to our dog's life. It doesn't even have to cost you anything at all. Um, so canine enrichment improves our dog's mental state of mind. So it just adds um, additional things to their life. They're not sort of just laying down or looking to get up to mischief. Mental stimulation can really tire a dog out more than a walk. So yes, uh, that doesn't mean you stop walking a dog at all. But what it means is, yes, you can go on a three hour walk with your dog, and um, obviously providing they are the right age, that will tire them out physically, but it won't actually tire them out mentally, and they will still be sort of looking to do things. Um, and that's when sometimes they look for, for things to get up to, like to your sofas. Um, so that's really, really important. Obviously, with puppies, they're limited on how long your walk can be. So for the first few months, they can only go for a 15-minute walk. Um, if your dog is unwell, so if they have a di uh, hip dysplasia, they're senior dogs, anything like that, then they might, they're not obviously going to be able to reach their true physical exercise potential but adding mental stimulation can be a massive massive big help to our dogs it helps with calmness not all dogs actually get enough rest and rest is really really important um, with our dogs so if you try and sort of create an area in your home that can be theirs where they can just go off and chill out and just kind of be away from sometimes the craziness of our household. It adds more fun to our dog's life. Um, we go out as humans, we make fun, um, you know, we do things that are fun, hobbies, etc. So why can't it be the same for our dogs as well? It, as I said earlier, it doesn't have to cost you anything at all. So literally your recycling bin becomes your best friend. And if you're a creative person um, or have a wonderful imagination, you can just create all these wonderful obstacles for your dog. Just always make sure they're safe and there isn't anything sort of sticking out or plastic. If you cut, cut a plastic bottle in half, that they're not going to hurt themselves. It helps build our dog's confidence and social skills. 
Dogs get to use their natural born gifts, such as sniffing. Um, and I put a little note there to remind me um, that if you didn't know, every single dog's nose is unique as a human's fingerprint. So if you don't like your dog sort of with their wet noses on your window, sort of drawing a little picture for you, um, just take a photo because that's their way of drawing you a picture like um, a toddler would. So that's how I like to sort of think about it when I look at my windows that have just been cleaned and they're like, oh, cool, look, but they're just looking out the window and being, you know, like, oh, what's that? What's that? Oh, there's a dog. Oh, let me look. And you've got a nice little drawing um, on there from their little nose print. Um, they learn new skills. So it's really, really important that dogs learn things. So I personally like to teach something new um, to my dogs every day. Um, and it doesn't have to be a big fancy thing, just something sort of little, um, like finding something new in a, in a new place under an object that maybe I haven't used before. Um, it can help with behaviour. So if dogs are bored, they will go and look for things to do. So adding enrichment will actually help deter that um, and stress as well. So if you have a dog that is stressed, so um, it could be separation anxiety, it could be new environment, it could be people, obviously um, a lot of dogs are going to have a massive dramatic um, change, especially sort of if you've been um, with, with COVID, there's sort of a lot of people that haven't been allowed, allowed to go out for ages and we've got, all got lockdown puppies. That will actually take a toll on our dogs. So going out, seeing people and other dogs can really, really stress them out. But adding enrichment and adding enrichment on walks will actually help your dogs actually cope with their environment. It builds dogs and human bonds via interactive play, um, being there for them. I'm very big on having a bond with um, my dogs and other dogs as well. Um, Tilly and Izzy um, and Marley, I mean, Tilly especially, um, would literally follow me through fire if I walked through, through it. Um, not that I plan to, but she would. There's been a couple of incidences. I had to rescue... Um, a dog that was the other side of a, a running river and I had to sort of cross all these stones and rocks to get to her because someone threw a ball and she was obsessed with balls and she sort of swam across to get the ball but because she had one already she couldn't pick up the other ball and she wouldn't cross come back without the ball so I had to go over and get her and get the balls to get her back and Tilly just swam and <laughs> sort of climbed everything, over everything to get to me. Um, obviously, that was before I got Izzy. Um, and I've been in the sea with Izzy last year and Tilly swam out. Marley, my old Izzy, is scared of water. So um, she just will not. <laughs> She's like, nope, not going near that. No, nope, I want to come over there, Mum, but I'm not. I'm not actually. I don't love you enough to cross the river. You're fine. I'll just watch and make sure you're safe from this side. Um Enrichment uh, also allows our dogs to engage in their sort of natural instincts. So if they like to chew, um, if they like to chase, digging, sniffing, um, just doing natural doggy things. If you add enrichment that actually taps into those behaviours, you won't have to worry about them chewing your walls, um, ripping up paper and things like that because you've added something else as an as an alternative to sort of channel that behaviour. So moving on, if there's one thing to start, if you're going to do one thing with canine enrichment, I would recommend doing Ditch the Bowl. You may have heard of Ditch the Bowl before. Um, it's something I used to do a little bit of. So I used to sort of do the plastic bottles and muffin tins and boxes and things like that. But when I got my border collie, I upped my game. <laughs> it got a whole new ball of wax with Izzy. I was sort of so paranoid that I wasn't doing enough mental stimulation with her. Um, I may have gone a little bit overboard with things that I did. Um, that might be why she she is the way she is um, nice and calm now, which is great. I don't know. Oh, I just got lucky with her. A mixture of both. doesn't matter. Um, but with Ditch the Bowl, it can really add a nice sort of basis for enrichment. It doesn't matter what you feed them. So you, they can be on just kibble, 
they can be on uh, wet foods, they could be on raw or a mixture. Um, it doesn't matter, there's ways that you can actually feed them through enrichment. Obviously, with wet food, I wouldn't recommend um, a snuffle mat. <laughs> Obviously, that's going to be really gross. But you can use um, like syringes here. So I've just got syringes that you can actually stuff the meat in and actually feed them that way. Um, muffin tins, you can use Kongs. Kongs are great. Um, there are different colours of Kongs. So I've got a couple of photos here to show you. So this one here with my Border Collie, uh, Izzy and... Tilly, they've actually, they're the puppy Kongs. So the puppy Kongs are baby blue and pink. Um, they come in different sizes. So don't worry if you've got, you know, a Rottweiler um, puppy and you think, oh, I need to go up. Um, just these are the two colours that you need for a puppy. And as I said, they come in different sizes as well. Then the next level is the red Kong, which is the one down here in the right with Izzy. There is also a black one for extreme um, bite chewers, so ones that can actually get through the red Kong, there's a black one. And then for senior dogs, there's a purple one as well. So it's important that you actually use the right colour Kong for your dog because obviously a puppy one is softer. So you don't give want to give your five-year-old, um, you know, Great Dane a puppy one because that, they will just destroy it but go for maybe sort of the red or the black one depending what type of bite your dog actually has um you've got obviously up here you have a slow bowl and that's just packed of different foods all dog friendly then a suitcase so yes that is a suitcase um as i said like use what's use what's in the house have a look you know especially with covid i think we've had to be really really resourceful with things so what I would do with a suitcase um, not only is it a fantastic place to feed your dog it actually builds up their confidence um, and it actually starts to add a little bit of movement so um, that little bit of unsteadiness under their paws some dogs do not like movement at all but this is a really really nice way to introduce that into our dog's life um, so what I would do is I would put, you can use their kibble, um, you can use treats as well. It's up to you what you use. With my dog's food, I actually measure it out for the day and I actually use it for my training. So they're, they're always sort of, in a sense, working for their food. There are days when I'm lazy and I will just get the food and just pop it down. Um, Izzy will not eat from a bowl at all. I've done ditch the bowl too much. So I, get the, I think there's a video page where I've actually offered her the bowl when she's turned her head away and just looked at me like I was absolutely <laughs> mental because I, I always have always made sure she has ways to actually eat her food that's not in a bowl and um, but with this I would put food in both sides so I'll just make it easy to start off with then on the other side I'll make sure sort of the fabric's unzipped put food in there put some in the little zip pocket there um so they have to sort of think about and discover how they actually get food from the other side because obviously this side that's open that's quite easy for them but the other side they have to work out a little bit what they do so that that's your mental stimulation they're using their mind so as they're thinking well how do i get that food it's actually tiring them out and it's building up calmness as well um, and what also happens the suitcase moves slightly. I don't force my dogs into the suitcase at all. I let them go at their own pace. So um, I'll just put food in. If they've eaten all that food, then I'll just put a little bit more in. And they step forward. They might just be happy to go in the suitcase. Um, they might sort of step back and just go, go slowly, but it's on their own terms. They're building up their confidence slowly. And that's really, really important that we never force our dogs into a situation that they might not be happy with because then you've lost them. They're not going to trust you because they just think, well, you're just going to force me into doing that. 
Um, so we let them go at their, their own pace. That's really, really important. Then we've got little Tilly here actually sitting in the same place. So she was quite happy after doing some work with her. Um, I've got Izzy there um, on her high bed with a plastic bottle. So plastic bottles are fantastic. Just make sure that you obviously take the lid off, um, take the little plastic rim, rim off and the label, and then you can put their food or treats inside and they can have lots and lots of fun running around and um, playing with a bottle. Um, if you've got flooring, then it will make a little bit of noise. Um, but it's not a problem for me but if you're if you don't really want that noise or if you have a meeting just pop it on a towel or that's big enough for them to kind of play around with um or use it during a time that you don't mind them making that noise then we've also got a licky mat licky mats are fantastic um and you don't always have to use their food you can just put um cottage cheese uh, Greek yogurt and um, I use kefir milk um, you know bashed up um, fruit and, and veg what I tend to do is on a licky mat I tend to split it into four little sections and put little bits um, so they'll have their vitamins they'll have sort of a little bit of kibble um, a couple of treats um, coconut oil things like that tuna as well as their dinner so they kind of get this variety <laughs> on this one little licky mat um, I'm just going to show you a couple of videos. I think they will play. So this um, little photo here that's got the cardboard box, uh, the platform and the washing basket. I'm going to play you that video first. So this um, is a puppy, uh, my friend's puppy that I look after sometimes. And this was introducing her to um, scatter feeding. So just sort of putting food on the floor and getting her to sort of use her nose and find the food and eat it. Um, and, but also building up her confidence, getting her used to um, new material under her paws. Um, when I recorded this, I didn't, didn't pay any attention to the radio, so I apologise for the noise in the background. With the washing basket, um, obviously it has that little bit of movement as well, so that will build up her confidence. So you can see she goes in there with um, quite happy, just goes in there, eats the food. So we're building up that positive association that she's exploring. She's coming against something that she hasn't met before, but she's getting rewarded by that food. She then goes over to the platform and she's got one paw on. So that one paw tells me that she's not 100% sure she's got that little bite and that material. So she can use that one paw just to kind of get the feeling for it. And then she goes back um, and she puts both paws on. Again, a little bit unsure, so she returns to the floor. And obviously she's getting praise from me. Um, so she knows that, oh, I'm actually doing something good because I know that she's a little bit anxious on that platform. And again, I'm not forcing her to do anything. I'm just letting her do what she wants to do. And she's eating that food as well. Cardboard box, so again, cardboard box, a little bit of movement, new material, and then she's climbing over me. And again, building up that confidence and building up that bond because she's experienced new things. I'm sitting there, so she knows I'm sort of, she's in a secure place because I'm there if she needs me. Um, she's calling over me at the end, which is fine. So that's that's what we want. We're sort of building up that bond. So that was so she was really happy with that and she sort of built up her confidence on her own then another thing that we can do um if you follow absolute dogs you'll probably know know this anyway called the cone game i think it's really really important that dogs get used to sort of putting their for example not because you know i think every dog should be muzzled definitely not but it's really important to teach them that you know if something happened, God forbid, and they needed to go to the vet and they needed to be muzzles, muzzled, then if they haven't had any type of experience like that, that will make the you know the vet visit even more traumatic for them. Izzy, when she was a puppy, um, she had to go vet, and my vets um, always, always, always um, put a muzzle on a border collie because they're they're prone to bite. 
Um, that horrified me, absolutely horrified me. Um, so I did lots of training with her. And this is one of the examples that I started with. Um, and that was just a, an ice cream at Flurry, just putting food in side and sort of getting her used to putting her nose in. You can use a cone. So if you have a cone as well, um, a cup, anything really that you may have around that they can put their nose in, just make sure obviously the edges are not not sharp. Um, and I'm happy to say that I've never had to put a um, muzzle on Izzy, um, but I've done lots of handling with her anyway. Um, but I'll just play you the video just to give you an example. So she's got her nose in there, quite happy. So she's just like, oh, this is nice. Whatever you've put in here, mummy, I really like that. Thank you. So I'm just checking there's no questions. So she plays with it, chews it a little bit, completely fine. And that's what we want. So if she was nervous of this, then she might back away from it. She might, and she looks like, oh, I've dropped it on the floor. Are you going to pick it up? But she would tell me with the body language, I love that her image face at the end is just like, what happened? Where did it go? And um, if she wasn't happy, obviously she wouldn't be putting her head in the um, tub. Um, she'd kind of maybe back away, put her ear back, look the other way. So when you introduce new things to your dog, no matter what age they are, um, watch their body language, see if they're happy, go really slow. And when I say go slow, if you think you are going slow, go slower and go 10 times slower because as humans we tend to rush and we expect things super super quick from our dogs and that doesn't happen and um, it takes time so all of these things on here and um, I forgot the muffin tin as, as well I love the muffin tin um, and build them up start slow so with a Kong just put a little bit of food in there to start off with so put something yummy and see if they actually eat the content if they do then maybe you can fill it up a little bit more um, and then give that to them if they can get through 10 coals then you can put them in the freezer um, for about an hour just so they get a little bit bit firmer and then give that to your dog don't go straight in with a frozen kong if they've never had a kong before because they will just have no idea what what they're doing. We need to sort of teach them and they need to learn that eating from a Kong is really rewarding. Um, it calms them down. Again, it's used that mental stimulation. Licking is really, really calming for our dogs. So that's why I've sort of suggested like Kongs and licky mats and um, things like that, snuffle mats. The muffin tin is a good example for starting different levels. So I've tried to sort of show both sides, but when you introduce a muffin tin, and if you have flooring again, make sure it's on a, on a towel just to make it easy to start off with. Put a bit of food in each one, so they're eating that. Then maybe take sort of a little bit of food out and just have it in a couple. Then start adding like a tennis ball. So start with one um, piece of food being covered. So they have to figure out how do I get that one piece of food then add a second one third one etc so they have to sort of really use their mind to figure out how they actually get the balls off and actually get that food underneath so for them figuring out some of these little things they're obviously using their mind tiring themselves out but they're getting a reward at the end because they're actually getting that that food which they're trying to get to so it might be that they just pick the ball up with their mouth and put it aside so it could be quite quick if it becomes easy for the for your dog remove the towel so it kind of moves around the floor a little bit as well so there's lots of different ways that we can feed our dogs so as we've seen some of these already in the um, pictures above snuffle mats kongs licky mats with um sort of things like snuffle mats Kongs, licky mats. Um, be, make sure you supervise your dog. So don't leave them, you know, with things like that and plastic bottles and then disappear for a couple of hours because there's always risk that they can chew through them, swallow them, anything like that. So just really be mindful 
when you do some of these things with your dog and don't leave them on their own. Um, antler and yak bones, rolled up towels. So you can start off quite easy. So again, have a towel laid out, scatter feed their food on top of it, um, let them eat it. Then maybe next time, roll one corner up. So they have to figure out how to get that from under that little flat the piece of the towel that you folded over. Then the next time, roll another bit over, et cetera, et cetera. So you've got a full, fully rolled towel that looks like a swish roll, um, and they have to figure out how to get that food inside. And you can make it, if they become really, really good at it, you can um, make it difficult by sort of adding a treat every other roll, even just adding one, one bit of food. If you do one piece of food, make sure it's something really, really smelly that they're able to sort of find and get to quite easily. Um, scatter feeding. I love scatter feeding. Scatter feeding, um, if you just do one thing and if they're on kibble, scatter feed. Just get the handful of their kibble and sort of just throw it on the floor. Don't throw it harshly so it literally goes under the, the fridge and freezer. So they're just like, I want to get that food. I can't get that food. Um, just scatter it around just so they have to sniff and find it. You can also scatter feed in grass. So if you have grass, so if they spend half an hour outside looking for the food that you've thrown out there for, well, yeah, sort of half hour, they will come back knackered because sniffing is um, calming. It helps de-stress them as well. And again, that mental stimulation. So you can probably see already everything kind of ties in with um, everything quite nicely. Tube boxes um, or cardboard boxes, keep your toilet roll tubes, um, kitchen roll tubes, pop those in the boxes um, and put their food in. You could, with this, you can definitely use wet food and raw food for that, and then you can just throw them away after. So just look at things that you, you have around the house that you can kind of keep um, and create fun enrichment for your dog. Um, obviously, we've got the muffin tin. Use daily food for training. So dogs really love working for their food, which I, I mentioned earlier. Measure it out, um, you know, prep the night before when you do their evening meal, kind of keep things, prep your Kongs, licky mats for the week. Sort of, if you add that, add that prep, it's not such a hard thing for you on a daily basis. Puzzles, um, you can buy lots of puzzles in pet stores um, and online. I tend to think they're quite easy. Um, so look at the ones that you can get and see if you can create something um, more difficult with things that you have um, in your recycling bin. Clam toys. So clam toys are quite good. There's a couple of different types. You've got sort of the one that kind of looks like an oyster. That's quite easy. Just It just splits in two. Um, I tend to use that as a reward for... Um, Tilly and Izzy when we do agility it's easy to throw and for them to open quite quickly uh, you can also get the flower so and that's got three corners with the velcro and again you just pop food inside um, cups so I like to play cups with my dog and know it's not the song from Pitch Perfect and <laughs> um, what you do is you have cups you put food um, under each one similar to sort of the muffin tin and they get to sort of knock the cups back and get that food underneath. What's great about the cups is, especially if you stack them, so maybe start with um, just the little plastic cups that you can buy um, you know, in, in the pound shop, something like that. You can stack them up and put food on each one, but as they go forward to get that food, it they will knock all the cups on the floor, so they get to deal with things falling over and things making noise. And noise sounds can be really scary for red dogs. Um, they have super, super sensitive hearing. So things falling can freak them out. But so start with maybe a towel underneath at first to see how they deal with that and then gradually make the towel, towel smaller. So it just they just fall on the floor and you can sort of stack them up. So there's lots of sort of fun things that you can do with that. Um, mentioned earlier, plastic bottle, calf hooves. So calf hooves 
Um, the reason why I said calf hooves um, is that if you have a puppy, they're softer for their teeth. Um, and also if you're introducing a calf hoof to your dog for the first time, um, you don't want to go in with something sort of really hard. So add um, calf hoof. If they are, if they if they have kibble, uh, milk, put a little bit of hot water over the kibble so it kind of melts a little bit so makes it a little bit softer. So then you can just pack the calf hoof, hoof out and then give that to them as well. So there are just a couple of ideas um, for ways to feed your dogs. Um, highly recommended if it's just the one thing that you do. There's lots of ideas there and there's probably more about, but these are just the main ones that I tend to do with my dogs. Obviously, with enrichment, it's not just about food. There's um, other ways that we can add enrichment to our dog's life. Um, this uh, video started straight away before I was even ready. And um, this was, so I'm just gonna play it to start off with, <laughs> as, as it wanted to play. Uh, so this was uh, one of my puppies, uh, was, this was Buttons, and she's just crawling over um, just shopping bags. So again, building up um, confidence, um, of the noise climbing over things and there's being stuff inside so that's sort of a nice thing to do because it gets them used to um new things that are coming into the house maybe and, and new smells things like that um so as i said enrichment is not just food it's training books going new places on walks even just um a new route to your walks i, I always look at walks as they're for the dog, they're not for us. So make sure when you do go on walks, even if it's just a quick walk, you just add something fun um, to that walk just to make it a little bit more interesting and fun. And if you add, make sure you're fun, your dogs will associate you as being the fun police. So when there are big distractions going at, on, that they're going to be focused on you. Sniffing, um, sniffing is fantastic. Um, so it, it can just so many benefits to sniffing games um i if you see me in a park with my dogs you know it's me because i'm the crazy lady <laughs> i'm always sort of running about um with my dogs um, i play hide and seek with my dogs i get them to chase me i never chase them they always chase me i use toys um on walks i use chase toys flirt poles things like that because it just builds up that enrichment i get them to do things so I get them to do so this picture up here i get them to do you know two paws on on you know trees things like anything that's around that i can bring into my dog's walk i will do so it kind of becomes fun you're kind of you're looking for things to do to sort of enrich your dog's life and, and make it fun basically um let them explore so let them do doggy things let them go off and and sniff um, I get too many people sometimes saying that their dogs keep stopping to sniff things that's a good thing we want that they're getting it's like us reading the latest okay magazine they're just reading the daily gossip so let them do it um find things on walks so if you go to um, a quiet section in a, a in a park hide something so put some food down put maybe one of their favorite toys down so they think oh I'm like super cool I've just found this and um, you find things so say oh look and drop some treats down so they start thinking that they don't want to leave you because you find chicken all the time which is awesome so why do they want to go and see the dogs across the park when you always find chicken it's more rewarding to be with you and let them chase so get them to chase you get them to chase toys dig in um so you know create i've got a couple of examples here create a little sandbox in your garden that you can put non-toxic sand in hide toys hide sort of bones and things in there so instead of them chewing um digging your recent flowers get them to dig um a sandbox they're super super cheap to buy um kiddie pools um I've got, a, as you can see, I've got a selection. So I've got the one here with Izzy in the sand. Um, another one when she was a, a bubby um, in the water. Then I've got one with 
Tilly with the little kids' boards. All that's enrichment, all that's building up their confidence, hide things in there for them to find. So we're tapping into sort of things they love to do, like eating and toy play and building their confidence. All those are really, really important for our dogs. Um, obviously, we've got a couple of sniffing photos. I let them go sniff. Um, I put them on cue. I will say, go and sniff. So they go off and, and find things. Um, you know, dog sports. So you've got scent work, agility, fly ball, hoopers. Um, I am an agility person. So my dogs are agility. Um, so you've got a little picture there of Tilly running through. That's fun. That builds up enrichment. It gives them a job to do. Um, water, introducing them to water, new environments, toys. Dogs love to play with toys. Um, their training, teach them to do. So I've got, um, you know, Izzy there on blocks. Get them to look at the environment around them. So there's uh, Tilly and Izzy looking at the ducks in the pond. And um, all that adds enrichment they're exploring the world around them they're sort of seeing what's about rather than sort of just on a lead walking walking around and then back that's boring that's not enriching enriching for our dogs at all make it fun if you're able to create um a sensory enrichment section in your garden if you can so there's a couple of photos here um make sure if you add um plants make sure obviously they're, they're dog friendly and um, so they get to smell different things they get to sort of see them bloom the, the different colors and um, you know tunnels different materials um, under their their paws so you know bubble wrap um plastic cardboard um soft material hard material all that just adds enrichment to our dog's life um, and they go through being confident as well because they're able to face these things in a safe environment. Um, they're going at their own pace. Um, so that's super, super important that we never ever force our dogs into something that they might be a little bit unsure of to begin with. Um, so that's about enrichment, not just food. Um, so moving on just uh, from there, with enrichment, it can really help with our dogs being calm, learning to settle, learning to sort of face things that might be scary. So a calm dog is a happy dog. So they learn to chill out on their own wherever they are. Um, we look for calmness, obviously, at home. I have a multi-dog household. They're all up here with me and they've all been, they're all kind of just laying down. None of them are sort of barking or, or going mad. That's kind of what I kind of, Want and what we kind of should want at home. They're able to sort of rest while I'm, I'm doing something so that my attention isn't fully on them and they're quite happy just to lay there and sort of go to sleep at their own pace. Um, you know, we want to be able to take our dogs, you know, especially as lockdown starts to end, um, depending on obviously where you are in the world, um, you know, to go to dog friendly pubs and restaurants visit family and friends without them sort of being hyper and being able to sort of calm themselves down and settle being able to look at wildlife visit new new places all those can be quite scary um for our dogs so if we can teach them to be calm they learn to sort of be in those situations and actually calm themselves down so they're able to sort of have the TV on with dogs and actually just watch the TV without barking and um, able to just sort of, you know, go do different things in, in parks and on walks. Um, I've got Tilly sort of sit, sitting on my lap while I'm teaching puppy classes, you know, so there's no, there's dog, obviously puppies and they've got toys that can be really upsetting for dogs. Uh, my eldest, doesn't like squeaky toys, it really sort of upsets her. And that's more as she's got older. Um, so that's something we're, I'm working on with her. So I'm going to give you a, a suit is he's um, awake and I'm going to show you how to start teaching your dog to settle. 
So I'm just going to go to the next page. So I, I copied this from Absolute Dogs just because I really like it. So full credit to them. So this is a calmness triad. So we've got our passive calming act activities. So what that means is things we give our dogs to do. Um, and then we may walk away and we might do other things. Then we've got our calmness protocol. So when we want to start building up on our do dogs being calm, we reward them. We reward them for offering that behaviour without us telling them to do it. So they will just lay down wherever they're, they're comfortable to lay down. Um, they might ignore the postman, for example. So that's when I would go in and feed them something. So I will go with a, a high reward treat, so chicken or a bit of steak, something like that, just to gain to build up that behaviour. So they start to learn that, oh, well, if I just lay here and do absolutely nothing, then I'm going to get rewarded for it. So they start to offer that more and more. If you introduce your dog to something that freaks them out, so it could be that other dogs stress them out, in, stand right back, so stand um, from a distance so they can watch from a place of calm, praise them, you know, good, nice, fab, um, give them food, so build on that, and then you can gradually get get closer and closer, so they're able to sort of be a, a nice distance from a dog without them actually being upset. When you go to the park or anything like that, sit down, take some time, especially sort of with um, senior dogs and, and and puppies. Sit down on a bench, take in the environment, let them build up. Um, their enrichment just from watching people. So they really, there's lots of things that you can actually do without sort of being full on with your dogs that actually really help with um, calmness. So I'm going to see, if, is, is this asleep? I'm going to see if she'll wake up. So bear with me because I'm going to adjust my camera. Um, so with Settle, um, I love Settle. I'm very, very big on Settle. Um, it's important for me for a number of reasons why my dogs um, are able to sort of go into that place of calm. So let me, you see, get away. So, so bear with me while I just adjust my camera so you can see her. So when I was introducing this to her, I just got her on her bed and I just popped the food down. Don't worry if they don't go into a down. Obviously, Izzy knows this, so she will go into a down, a, a down naturally. What we want to do is we want to introduce them to actually being relaxed. So it could be on their bed, it could be on a blanket, and we just reward. So we just pop the food down. And then what we can do is as well, we can actually build up the duration. Obviously, we want them to actually get to actually laying down. And when they do start to lay down, don't tell them down. Just lure them into that down. So I'm just going to get them off the bed. Break. Break. Okay. Break. Come on. Okay. 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 I'm tired. Okay, that's it. Lazy puppy. So, yes. so we're going to get her on the bed. And then we're just going to lower her into the down. So when they go into that down, put the food in between their paws. We're building up the value of down and we're building up the value of settle. And you say the word settle. You only, you can use a different keyword if you want to. It's completely up to you. Until you went into a down then as well, but you missed that because the camera's too high. Um, and then just say set off and count how long. So to start off with, I would be quite quick. So I'd maybe sort of put one down on the first floor into that down position. And then say settle. Then I would wait sort of maybe three or four seconds, pop another piece of food down and say settle. So they start to learn that settle is sort of the down. And settles a nice sort of 
calm place for them to be. Um, I will send the document to the group so you can actually see that and actually go through the step by step with this. Another calming exercise I do, and I'm actually going to put my hair back for this, is actually teach middle. So middle is a very, very powerful tool. It's very, very versatile. It teaches your dogs proximity. It teaches them to be close to you, especially for recall. Um, it, you can use it at vets if they're nervous. Uh, you can use it as groomers. You can get your groomer to do it. Um, Izzy is nervous of other dogs in her face, especially bouncy dogs. So if she ever feels that the environment is too much for her, she will go in middle. Um, so that's how she communicates. She's a little bit, bit unsure. And she will just literally push in between my legs and be like, hi, mum. So I just know that we just need to take a little time. I'll do some catch with her. So she, I'll just drop the food from a height so she can catch it. Um, I'll sort of stroke her and I will just stand here and just let her take her time so she can kind of watch the environment as well so it's not not too much for them. So I'm just going to teach you Mizzle now. So let me stock up with some more. Yeah. So I use the word break when I actually want her out of position. If she's pulled herself into a middle, then I will let her release herself. I want to so I'll just wait. When you want to teach middle, so just that little bit. Sorry guys. <laughs> So when you want to take the middle, you have them in front of you, you give the food, you lure them round. So when they kind of just get past your knee, you pull them so they know, so do some little steps, they know that it's more valuable. Bring them round, she did it mate, reward them for that middle position. I'm going to show you with Tilly, because Tilly doesn't do middle is not something that I've taught her to do. So I don't know if she will. Tilly's very much like I'll do what I want to do, basically. But the same principle. So there is a, is it up? Is it up? Is it up? So treat her nose. You lure her around so she sees she's not trying to it. You reward her for being part just past the knee. And then with your other hand. Comes through. Should I use big guns, food? So if your dog does this, I'm worried. So training goes wrong. I wasn't sure she would do it. We don't. Not something I've actually taught Tilly to do. Draw her around. Draw her around. Reward her for that. Then quickly. Going with your other hand and then just roll her around into the middle and roll her there. So give them a couple of bits of food, like three or four bits of food. Okay, you did that, you killed the papa. Um, so, middle's a really, really powerful tool. It teaches them that it's a safe place, so they always know that if they go in that position, they they're safe with you and you will know that and look look after them basically and not push them into something or environment that they're not really, really happy with. Um, so I think that is everything for my talk. So um, if you want to keep up with everything puppy school, I am on Linktree, so there's all my uh, social media there and um, there's some discounts on there as well for you know money off different products that I use
always suspicious of people recommending things to me because I'm like, why? Um, but I have tried them, I use them, so that's why I recommend them. Um, but that's my talk for this evening. I am back tomorrow evening at 11 p.m. to talk about puppies. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something new. If I'll just see if there are any questions, which I don't think there is. If you watch this back um, or you think later on, oh, actually, um, I, need to, I didn't ask this, maybe I should have done. Feel free to email me, um, just contact me and I will get back to you. Okay, but have a nice evening. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.